Hi, Pavel and Lau. Um, hope I say your names correctly there. I um, thought it was easier actually to leave a video rather than try and type this out. So, um, sorry, there's noise in the background, so I appreciate that hopefully it doesn't disturb the message too much. Um, so, um, the answer to do I have a daily routine? Um, not a strict one I follow every day. Um, I do, where possible, get up, in contrast to what Dr. Joe says, typically have a coffee first um i do try and meditate if i don't meditate um I, I, by meditate i mean i would try to do one of dr joe's doesn't always happen um my my schedule can be quite fluid really so some days i have my kids sometimes i've got work to do early on um sometimes like the, the mornings are much more free so um it, it does really depend on on the day um the biggest thing that i would say in this is about a state of being so this is not something that you switch on like that. It's something that you develop over time. So you know, the meditations, Dr. Joe's like uh, new potentials is great for that. Um, and to be fair, a lot of his meditations, well, I think all of his meditations are great. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I do, there's, you know, I've got quite a few of them now. So the, the ones that I tend to do more often, new potentials, um, bless it, the energy centers. I think I've only got the original, the first one, time space meditation, um occasionally do um the pineal gland one and uh the walking meditations but i think to be fair you're going to get a lot out of even if you just do um, new potentials and bless the energy centers you're going to get so much i've also got a couple of his abundance ones as well um so um so yeah a bit of a dr joe junkie really um but it's it's like it's about a state of being right so i think there's two aspects to that one is um being clear on what you want. So one of the examples I put down was around my apartment, um, which I've recently created. Um, and I did new potentials now, so bear in mind, right? I, so where are we now, July? Um, I started to look, look, right? Not seriously, but just started to get an awareness of the market and what was nearby and what I liked and how much they were. So very much kind of the rational process on this. Um, looked at a few houses, that was back in January, February time, maybe March. Um, but certainly months ago um, and I was looking at things and I thought I'd found some and, and I didn't get them other people got them before me and then then I decided right you know what I'm going to throw new potentials at this right so um, for a, now five days out of seven I did new potentials on two things one is my business one was a new apartment and the the, the, the intent for the new apartment was something on the lines of space for me and my kids I obviously wanted an office as well um, I wanted somewhere close to friends and family um, I also wanted somewhere where like the inside and outside kind of merged I didn't feel like I was in a, in a box and I, and I wasn't even hung up on it being a house or an apartment right um, that was the kind of criterion and then the emotions were around like feeling like abundance that freedom the freedom piece of being you know played club at the moment i'm in a shared house um you know so um you know i share a house with one of my mates so you know i wanted that piece of just being able to be right and that that was it right it's not you know i, I kind of left the details up to you know, i'll say the universe right to my self to the unknown um and i did it five days out of seven so say that was sunday to sunday sunday to saturday um on the tuesday so three days after I found an apartment, went to look at it, really loved it, bigger than I imagined I could get for the money I was really looking to spend. And um, and I don't mean to say that from a lack perspective. I, I try when I when I purchase something or you know agree to buy something or rent something, I do it with a view of where I'm at, right? I'd, you know, I'd love a quarter of a million pound supercar, right? Where I'm at right now is not that place, but it doesn't mean I'm you know I'm, I'm still you know I'm I'm still putting the energy in imagining what it would be like, right? As, you know, a bit of background. Um, but in terms of the apartment, you know, I turned up, a bunch of people went for it. Um, the landlord chose me, right? Cool, yeah. More magic shows up. Generally in the past when I've gone for an apartment, there's been multiple people, I've not got it. So that's playing out in my mind, right? But I'm like, no, that's cool, right? I'm just going to surrender to this story I'm telling myself and just keep as best I can putting myself into the place of imagining and feeling what it would be like. So that's not just in the meditation, but that's, you know, between work meetings or... You know, I'm sat having a coffee, I'll just do it for you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, just trying to make it a regular practice. You know, it doesn't have to be this grand thing of 
write something down 400 times like I've seen elsewhere or meditate it strictly for an hour a day. You've got to do it an hour a day or it's none of that. It's like doing what you can. And, and obviously the more invested you get in that emotion, often things happen quicker, not always. Um, but like, you know, all, all of this stuff is, you know, it's, it's, you know, in all his meditations, it's, it's the theme that goes through them all. And it's definitely in his book as well. So when I read the chapter about new potentials, about being there in your mind and imagining it and being as centered as you possibly can, or as deep in meditation as you possibly can, the better, right? So, you know, I don't, you know, I have a very, very busy lifestyle. I've got a lot of you know, great things going on. Um, I'd love to meditate an hour a day and I appreciate that. I have some resistance to that, right? Other thing, life takes over at times. Um, but it's about being in that place as often as you can. Um, the other part of it for me, which I know Dr. Joe doesn't really talk about, is that awareness of the things that you tell yourself that hold you back. So, um, and for this, sitting in silence is great. Even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, right? Yeah, journaling. Well, I, I journal loads. You know, I get through a you know, 200 page journal like every three months maybe. Um, sit there and write down your thoughts. So if you want something and it's not happening, just start writing down. I want it because, and I think this about it. And as soon as you start getting onto that, just, just free flow it, right? Don't judge it, don't second guess it, just free flow it. And you'll be surprised at what comes out. And those things that come out are the things that you're telling yourself, your old self, that are holding you back. So so it's like a two-pronged attack, right? One is getting into that higher vibrational emotion um, and, and being there as often as you can. The other one is the awareness of the things that you're telling yourself. So to give you an example of the 30% revenue increase um, I mentioned, like my career, like I, you know, was going up like that, you know, pay rise every year, I was doing really well. You know, sometimes I get like a 50% pay rise you know, it was, I was doing really well. I work in IT. And then for about the last, I'll say 10 years, it's just plateaued. Yeah. I hit this limit and, and I've tried a number of times to step beyond it. And, and I've always kind of come at it from that rational place. Well, if I just do this and have this many clients and I'm doing this, right. But it never had that juice, right. I felt like I was doing it because I had to, not because it was something that I loved. So the emotions behind it were not higher vibrational. They were more probably based in the fear. You know, I must get more money because that way I can get, you know, I can clear debt or, you know, get a bigger house or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, and that's probably all personal to every one of us. Um, so like, I've done a lot of work on abundance mindset and yeah, obviously part of Dr. Joe's stuff is imagining what you want. So like when I when I imagine my dream home, which is probably a multi-million pound pad, right? That's not what I'm getting next, Neil. It's like, it's, you know, things come up, yeah? And yeah, you know, I've been doing this quite a lot and um, obviously regularly for you know, Dr. Joe's stuff for two years, all the similar stuff for about six years before that. Um, like, I've, I've always tried to increase income from a place of lack and and I've not really dug into what those stories were that were holding me back and and I, and I sat there a couple of months back maybe three months back ago now um, and and as I started to journal like just free flowing it occurred to me that certainly in the UK there's a tax bracket where when you go above it tax gets a little bit yeah it gets a bit nastier for a while if you want to nasty is probably the wrong word but you end up effectively they wrote you so you kind of a bit of background you get a tax-free allowance then you get taxed at different rates and when you get to a certain level they uh the, the government erodes your tax-free allowance so effectively you get kind of double tax for a period of time until you've got no tax-free allowance and then it's back to normal again and this limit is what i've been bouncing against um and when i was an employee yeah and i worked for another company um Every time I got a bonus that went into this, the tax man would try and take me low, you know, take more money from me. And of course, I needed that money to live on. So I always end up having big conversations with them. It'd take me months to resolve it. You know, it triggers pain, right? You talk, Dr. Joe talks about the negative emotions and living through it. So next year, what am I doing, right? I'm, I'm already reliving this bad experience, yeah? And then I quit 
working for someone and go on my own and quite quickly um yeah because effectively i went on my own doing what i did for a corporate anyway so uh, i was just freelance so again my accountant is drubbing into me don't go above this tax gets you know more expensive you'll you know spend more on tax than you're taking home and all this kind of stuff right so this story drummed in drummed in drummed in right and and yeah you could probably take this story and translate it into any other area of life and self-imposed self-imposed limit yeah you know the four minute mile really yeah no one believed it could be done um so i got to a point a few months back where i wrote that down and i'm like so i'm gonna say Fuck. right that's held me back for 10 years and as much of the self-awareness i've done and meditation right just didn't get beyond it and so I made a decision in that moment for, I don't care if I go £100 or £1,000 over that limit. I'm going to go through it, right? That was it, right? I was going through it. That limit is no longer going to hold me back. And and I embodied it, you know? I didn't, you know, there was part of me that's a bit like, ah, what's it going to look like? You know, am I going to end up with a big letter from the tax man? You've not paid enough tax and to find money in the future. It's like, I'm going through this and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability right now. And I tell you what, it was only a couple of weeks after that that I picked up another client. And there's the 30%, right? So it's not a grand. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you the percentages, obviously, but you know, what I translate, it's, it's way more than a grand. Um, blown right through it, right? So when these things start to happen, um, like, start to realize what's possible, you know, where, um, you know, that how much a lack of awareness and I don't mean that in a bad way but not being aware of the stories we tell ourselves really holds us back and and that's why I do this two-prong approach um I always I always try to start with the emotion of what I want and then observe what comes up um and then work on that as much as being in the emotion the vibration of the vision um and, and and that's something I actually learned from a guy called William Whitecloud um I think he's good. I think a lot of the Dr. Joe stuff is William stuff on steroids. Um, so much better. Um, but yeah, I hope that, I hope this video makes sense. Um, and yeah, any questions, free to ask, you know, feel free to ask. And uh, yeah, have a, have a fantastic day.